In 2013, I was a young middle school teacher who made videos like this. Let me name a few. Frog skin, slimy and slick. Or the chocolate fondue. <laughs> but with you. But with you. I took my photography hobby and channeled it into what started to become a business by shooting weddings on the side while I taught full time. Now, a lot of you might be in the same situation. You either have a full time or part time job and you have a photography hustle on the side that you hope to be your full-time gig someday. Now, I don't claim to have all the answers on how to create a successful wedding photography business, but what I do know is I have experience from the past seven years in growing a healthy and sustainable one, and I wanna share it with you. I swear I Who am I kidding? I never wear this. <laughs> All right, let's be real. This is uh, this is what I actually wear to work. <laughs> you know, you probably clicked on this video to see kind of my tips and tricks of how I make $100,000 a year as a wedding photographer. It's a little bit more nuanced than that, uh, but I'd love to dive into it today with you. So, so jump on board. In the photography world, a lot of times, wedding photography gets a lot of crap. A lot of people say it's like, the bottom of the totem pole. It's not really necessarily what anyone strives to want to do, but I'm here to give a different perspective today. And it's not one that's heard very often online, I think. It's that wedding photography can be a really lucrative career and one that is really creatively fulfilling. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna look at this video and be like, oh, that dude's just social flexing. He's like, yeah, I make 100 grand a year. What do you do? It's not true, uh, really, in all sincerity. I love being able to share what I've learned in my career, and I like being as open and transparent as possible so that I can help other people find the same kind of success that I've seen in my seven years of doing this. You know, I didn't write a four page script for this video and block out the whole day just to brag to you about how I make a millionth of the amount Jake Paul makes in a single day. It's every day bro! Now the first full year that I jumped ship and went full time as a wedding photographer, I made $105,000 on the year and I wanna give you a little insight as to how I got to that place. Now, before you go analyzing all the numbers, just recognize that each year is comprised of couples paying their last 50% on their wedding, as well as retainers for the next year. Uh, that mixed with the portrait sessions that I did on the side, as well as some side hustles. The numbers can get kind of fuzzy, and some weddings were photo and video. Uh, nonetheless, let's start with 2013, the first year I felt comfortable calling myself a professional wedding photographer. In 2013, I shot eight weddings and my price range was from $1,000 to $1,800 and I told of $15,000 for the year. In 2014, I shot 18 weddings. My price range was $1,200 to $2,750 and I totaled $40,000 for the year. In 2015, I shot 22 weddings. My price range was $1,500 to $4,000 and I totaled $80,000 for the year. In 2016, I decided to leave teaching, go full-time with my photography career. I shot 32 weddings. My price ranged from $2,000 to $4,000, and I totaled $105,000 that year. 2017, I shot a little bit less, 30 weddings, $2,500 to $5,000, and I totaled $117,000 on the year. So without further ado, let's hit some of the practical tips of how to hit that 100K landmark in a year. Shut the Number one. Number one is know yourself and know your market. I'm gonna go all Gary Vee on this one and I'm gonna say you need self-awareness if you wanna be in this industry. You have to see where you wanna be and know that you can get there someday. So my recommendation is following other wedding photographers. Follow them on Instagram, follow them on Facebook, check out their blog, check out their MySpace. Take bits and pieces of what they do. Send them DMs, see if they'll answer. Take their classes, go to their workshops, pick their brains and start formulating your own style based on the preferences that you have from other people. 
Not saying plagiarize, don't plagiarize exactly what they do, but be influenced and inspired by what they do to create your own voice. Something that people don't consider often, what city are you in? I'm in Chicago, it's one of the biggest wedding markets in the country. Maybe you need to move to a metropolitan area or advertise and market for a metropolitan area and market for wedding photography. And then you can book weddings at higher prices, and bigger budgets. Number two is strategize how to sell your services. Decide how you're going to structure your pricing or structure your packages. All of my packages include hourly coverage from start to finish and all edited images on an online gallery that I send to them and it gives them all printing rights, basically to download and do really whatever they want with the photos. Other photographers like to group tangible items together in packages, so photo books, prints, other gifts, thumb drives, you could literally sell anything in packages, and that could be used to increase your margins on each package. It's just a different strategy. Either way, pick a system that you think will work and test it out. See if it does work. If it doesn't, the beauty is you can always change things because it's your business. You get to do whatever you want with it. Number three is systems. I would highly recommend a CRM. It's a, cl a CRM, client relationship management. This is what it's short for. Some I would recommend are Tave, Dubsado, Honeybook, shoot queue, there are a bunch to choose from. This is something that's going to get everything in one place for you. So schedules, emails, client lists, surveys, literally anything. It's usually your one-stop shop for everything. Or if you can't afford something like that, you can do what I've done in the past seven years, which is hold a Google Drive account with folders and systems uh, and folders within folders. I, you know, it's, there's a reason it's really, really cheap. Get a photo delivery service. Uh, I recommend either Pixie Set or Pick Time. These are two platforms where you can deliver all of your photos in a beautiful gallery to your clients. They can download all the images, they can create favorites lists, they can order prints. It's your one-stop shop for literally everything with delivering photos, and it's amazing. And if you set up your store in those galleries, you can make profit margins on selling prints. What I do every time I send the gallery is in the first two weeks they have that gallery, they get 25% off of prints and I give them a special coupon code and friends and family almost always the night before it expires order prints. And like I said, I'm fully transparent with these numbers and how I got to these places and this year alone, I grossed $11,000 in print sales. So it's significant and it could really get you to that point where you're reaching that next financial milestone. Number five, sell your brand and sell your service. The best compliments I got this past year were from my clients and their families and their friends saying that their experience of having me on their wedding day was even better than whatever photos I took. I kept them calm, relaxed, and de-stressed the whole time and let them just have fun on one of the most important days of their life. Number six, scale your business if possible. Think of new ways that you can make profit in your business other than just shooting on the wedding day. You can hire an associate photographer and take a cut off of administration. They can shoot and edit the whole thing under your brand. Consider learning video. I took on wedding videography as soon as I started and it's been an amazing add-on to my business along with photography. Really the possibilities are endless for growing your business outside of the core model of just shooting a wedding. So brainstorm about those things, think creatively how you can make that extra money and go after it. Finally, my last and seventh point in this is kind of my mantra and what I'm trying to make my mantra on YouTube. Lean into what makes you different. You really have to find your voice in this industry if you wanna see a lot of success. Like I said earlier, you're gonna to wanna to follow people that really influence you and you think are really good at this craft, but allow their skills and what they're good at to influence you in a way that creates your own unique voice and go pursue those things. Practically speaking, some of those things for me are night photography, double exposures, using my tilt shift lens, and combining all of the different ideas that I literally have a whole list of online all together to try to make my voice unique and blasting those online so that people can see that unique voice and that I stand out from the crowd. Now I know I only just scratched the surface on what it takes to be a successful wedding photographer, uh, but most importantly what I want to drive home is that you need to care about this craft. 
I see so many people in this industry just burn out because they're chasing the money, they're chasing the travel. Granted, it's given me some of the coolest opportunities I've experienced in my life with traveling to places I never, never would have been otherwise and documenting some of the most intimate and coolest moments in people's lives. But I think the driving factor that continues to allow me to be successful in this industry is that I really care about my clients and I really care about their experience and I want them to have an amazing experience on their wedding day. They see that, they tell their friends about that, their family sings your praises when you do that for them and it's nothing but good. I just think it's funny that people mock the industry because I have learned some of the coolest things in life from my experiences with other people and photographing people and seeing the intimacy that they have between each other and their family and friends. Like when Lon heard her father reassure her that he was so proud of her in front of her and Ryan's family. Or when Nathan and Vika celebrated their Korean Christian and Russian Jewish heritage under the chuppah that her father made. Or when Roma came up to me at her sister's funeral and gave me a big hug telling me that she was so thankful that I took some of the last portraits of her sister that her and her family could have for the rest of their lives. This stuff transcends money and success, guys. It's life and it's deeply fulfilling work. And anyone who says it's unimportant doesn't understand its power. Honestly, if you're in this business, I hope that money doesn't even matter to you at the end of the day. More than anything, I hope you care about serving your clients and their families and giving them the greatest intangible gifts they could ever receive. Photographs. Don't you fall asleep tonight Can you hear the words I say Don't you see the friendly fire Thank you so much for watching guys. If you really enjoyed this video, please hit it up with a like. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to be updated whenever I post something new, which I am hoping to make a lot more frequent this year in 2019. If you'd like to follow me and more of my work, you can check me out on Instagram, at eric.floberg. If you have any other comments, or questions, please leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to chat more with you about anything I discuss in this video and really looking forward to see you guys in the next one. Thanks friends, thanks for watching, and uh, don't forget to lean into what makes you different. Peace.